Hi guys, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York and today I wanted to do a little video on the subject of bradycardia or slow heart rate. This was requested by my friend Leah who is on my Facebook page and she said a few weeks ago actually could you do a video on bradycardia and I promised I would do this but unfortunately it's taken me this long to do it. Now the normal heart rate, the normal heart rate at rest should range between 60 and 100 beats per minute. If your heart rate is over 100 beats per minute, then that is defined as tachycardia. If your heart rate is below 60 beats per minute at rest, then it is defined as bradycardia. And nowadays, we're surrounded by technology. Lots of people have Fitbits and smartphones and apps, and uh, some people have blood pressure machines and oxygen measuring machines. Um, <clears throat> and therefore, all these devices give us a measure of our heart rate. And uh, when the heart rate is below 60 beats per minute, some of these machines will flash up and say the heart rate is slow. And this causes people a great deal of concern because they say, well, why is my heart rate slow? And particularly if the heart rate is, say, 40 beats per minute or something like that, a lot of people have actually written to me expressing concern about the fact that why is my heart rate slow, slow? Could it stop? Could I die? Because my heart rate is so slow that I could die. For could it just stop? Okay, And I thought I would do a, a video to try and clarify some of this, um, um, can, uh, uh, clarify um, some uh, information about a slow heart rate and also put your mind to rest that your heart will not just stop. Okay, It rarely ever happens that the heart stops because of a slow heart rate. Let me just talk you through uh, a few things. Okay. The first thing is when um, our machines flash up this number 45 or 50, the only way to uh, make sense of this to, is to understand the relevance of the number. All right, so let me talk you through this. What is the heart rate and why is it so important? The heart's function is to pump oxygen rich blood around the body. And to be able to pump enough blood round, it has to beat a certain minimum number of times. Okay. If it doesn't beat the minimum number of times, not as much blood will get round, and therefore our vital organs, which need oxygen-rich blood, will not function as well. Okay. Although a heart rate of less than 60 is considered slow, it often has no impact on us, because as the heart slows down, the heart has more time to fill with blood. And therefore, although the heart is beating less fast, it's pumping out more blood with each beat. And therefore, the product of the heart rate and the amount of blood is probably the same. Let me show you this. All right. Here we go. The heart is pumping at, say, 70 beats per minute. All right. It's pumping like this. Now, if you slow it to 50 beats per minute, what will happen is that the heart will go. See, it's filling with more blood. It's going a bit slower, but it's filling with more blood. So probably the same amount of blood is going out when it's be as compared to when the heart's beating at 70 beats per minute. Okay, and that is why even though your heart may be slower, it does not necessarily mean that less blood is going around the body. Of course, at a certain point, the heart will become so slow, okay, that it isn't able to pump out enough blood. But at that point, our vital organs will start complaining that they're not getting as much blood. Now, let me tell you <clears throat> a little bit about the vital organs. The vital organ which is most sensitive to less blood going around is the brain. And the reason is that the brain is the furthest away from the ground and therefore the hardest point for the heart to get blood to. And if the heart slows down or if it's not pumping out enough blood, then the back of the brain will be the first area that will start noticing it. And if you're getting less oxygen and less blood to the back of the brain, then uh, uh, the immediate result is that you start feeling dizzy or you black out. All right. So if there is indeed a shortage of blood going around the body, uh, then the symptom, one of the first symptoms that people experience are sudden transient dizziness or potentially blackouts. But if you're not experiencing that, then it means that the blood is getting to the hardest point 
to where it needs to go, i.e. the back of the brain, which is the hardest place for the blood to get to, simply because it's the furthest away from the ground, from gravity. And so if you're not feeling dizzy or not blacking out, then the blood's getting where it needs to get. And therefore, it doesn't really matter what the heart rate is. It doesn't really matter what the number is that you're looking at. It is getting, whatever it is, it's getting the blood round. In some ways, it's good because if um, you're getting the blood round with your heart only working at 45 beats per minute, then why do you want it to work harder? Uh, because, you know, it's doing the job without having to work so hard. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, <clears throat> And that's why I say it doesn't really matter what the number is. The more important thing is, does it actually, are your vital organs being perfused at that number? If, if you're not feeling dizzy, if you're not uh, lightheaded, if you're not blacking out, then that number is doing what it's meant to do. And therefore, the absolute value of the number doesn't matter so much. All right. Uh, <clears throat> the second thing to say is that if um, the heart, if, if the heart is doing what it's doing, you don't need to treat it. If the, heart, if the heart rate is 40 and the blood is getting round, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to treat it because uh, you're not getting any symptoms. So treating the number is not going to make you feel any different. The second thing to say is the heart rate is situational. All right. Um, you may think that a heart rate of 40 maybe is too slow. But actually, when you're sleeping, then a heart rate of 40 is quite normal because your body doesn't require much blood at that time. So when you have these halter monitors and they say, oh, at night the heart rate is 35 or 30 beats per minute, it doesn't matter. You probably don't need that much blood at night anyway, so the heart rate is okay. As long as you're not feeling lightheaded or blacking out or having fits in the middle of the night, it doesn't really matter. All right. The third thing to say is... And this is really important because um, um, uh, it'll sh tell you why the heart won't just stop. Okay, uh, now you have to understand the electrics of the heart a little bit, and let me explain this to you. All right, the the heart is what is called myogenic, which means that the electricity that makes the heart pump is generated within the cells of the heart. What that means is, for example, if I take the heart out of, uh, if I take my heart out for a few minutes, it'll keep beating. That tells me that it isn't reliant on anything else to keep beating. The cells within the heart make it beat. Okay. Eventually, it'll stop beating because the cells will die because they're not getting any oxygen. Uh, but initially, the heart will keep beating. Now, the part of the heart which produces the electricity to make the heart beat is called the pacemaker or the sinus node, all right? Uh, and that produces the impulses at the highest rate, and that's why it is considered the pacemaker, it is considered the orchestrator, it makes the heart beat. However, if you cut out the pacemaker, the heart will not stop beating, all right? It will continue to beat because other parts of the heart are also capable of generating electricity, and so they will take over. The difference is, if your pacemaker is intact, your heart will be beating at, say, 60 beats per minute. If you cut the pacemaker out, the heart will beat a bit weaker and a bit slower, say, 40 beats per minute. But it is beating, and therefore, because it's beating, it will keep getting some blood around. And at that point where there's a shortage of blood, you will get symptoms of dizziness or blackouts, and therefore, you'll go and seek help, and someone will pick that up and treat it. So those are two or three reasons why you shouldn't worry about your heart stopping in the middle of the night or anything like that or get too worried about the number that you read on the Fitbit or the blood pressure machine. The more important question is how do you feel? If you feel fine, don't worry about it. It doesn't really need anything doing. If you feel dizzy, don't worry. It's not going to stop. But yes, it is important to go and see a doctor because if they fix the slow heart rate by either putting in a pacemaker uh, <clears throat> or taking away medications which may be slowing your heart, then you won't feel dizzy and you'll feel back to normal. So um, most of uh, the things that a slow heart rate does relate to quality of life rather than your length of life. If you have a slow heart rate, you will feel dizzy, you, will, you are more likely to fall, 
and therefore it's worth getting fixed. On the other hand, if you have a slow heart rate and you're functioning completely normally, then don't worry about it because ultimately that's what the heart was meant to do and it's doing the job at that rate. So I hope uh, this helps. I will do another video at some point to try and explain to you why people develop bradycardias. Um, but usually uh, the pacemaker uh, of the heart uh, is uh, sensitive to other influences. So adrenaline, vagus nerve, medications, infections, etc. If the heart and, and usually treating those things which are influencing the pacemaker will improve the heart rate. Sometimes the pacemaker itself becomes ill, and that is usually either in relation to infections, such as Lyme's disease or something like that, or more likely due to old age. So slow heart rates because of a, of a, of a uh, uh, diseased pacemaker usually occur in people who are elderly. All right. Most of the other times, if you see a slow heart rate, it's because of something external to the heart, like medications, um, like thyroid dysfunction, um, <clears throat> like um, uh, jaundice, uh, like uh, low body temperature, that kind of thing. All right. So I hope this was useful. Uh, uh, please, please, please um, um, <clears throat> keep your comments coming. I really enjoy reading them. I like um, it. It fills me with motivation. And I'd like you. I'd like to thank you for listening. And uh, if you can, please do consider subscribing to my channel and sharing this video with your friends. Uh, either they'll find the content really interesting and really get into it, or they'll find me so boring that they'll fall asleep. And as you know, I've already mentioned how important it is to get some sleep. So it's a win-win situation. Thank you so much. All right. Bye.